But first up, can you imagine what it would be like to run 60,000 kilometres over some of the harshest terrain on the planet? Sounds like Mission Impossible, right? Yeah? Well, not exactly. Our next guest has spent the last 14 years doing exactly that. From the Sahara Desert to the mountains of Nepal, from the Bluff to the Cape, ultramarathon runner Lisa Tamadi has undertaken some of the toughest runs on the planet. And she joins us now. Lisa, I'm oh sorry, but I think you are nuts. She's not nuts. nuts. <laughs> Who in their right mind She's wants to run over Josh. 50 Ks? She's brilliant. Look, I get the mentality. I think that's stunning. Look, you must, orbit. you must be, you, you must be. Oh no, I understand that. Yeah. You, the, now, but the strength that's going there. Now, 60,000 kilometres yep. equates to just over 1,400 marathons. Mm -hmm. See, nuts. Two and a half nuts. times around the world. Yep. Why? Look, I mean, I didn't sort of grow up doing this sort of thing. And, I, and the funny thing is, I'm not even a talented runner. But I've, uh, I am into adventure and I am into pushing the limits and I am into going to these exotic locations and, and sort of finding out what I'm made of. So for you, as, as much as it is a race and you're representing New Zealand. Sometimes, And, yep. and, and, and yourself. Yeah. Um, is it a mental game that you're playing with yourself? Yeah, it, it definitely is, Josh. It's like the first, you know, after 50 kilometres, everybody's knackered, putting it bluntly. Mm. And then it's all about what's upstairs, you know, and that's probably my strength. My strength doesn't lie in being fast. I'm an asthmatic. I broke my back when I was 21. I don't have a heck of a lot of talent in that department, but what I do have is, is a strong, you know, mind, if you like. How do you get past that? Because you, you did mention that asthmatic, yep. and, you, and, you, and you have broken your back. There's a lot of pain involved with that. Yep. And then you're turning around and doing these crap. Like I understood that you ran in the pool, and yep. it's cold, so the asthmatic Himalayas. thing. Yes, yeah. We went up last year. Actually, it was uh, in uh, Ladakh, in the Kashmir region in India, and it was 222 kilometres over the two highest passes in the world, so motorable wow. passes. And going up to five and a half thousand metres, you've got only a third of the oxygen that yeah. you've got down here so being an asthmatic that was a really big challenge is that the most wicked one you've done yeah well there was another one in niger april that i did it was a 333k race and i got food poisoning an hour oh into it gosh. so that was probably more drastic in a lot of ways you talked <laughs> about 50ks is that the longest you would run in one day oh heck no 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 um <laughs> non-stop sort of like 250 kilometers 250 in one day well you're yeah, non-stop it sometimes takes two days yeah. or three days depending on how long you know the one in the Himalaya last year, uh, 53 hours. And, so that, and that, actually, now you're about to go up Mount Everest? Uh, next year, no, I'm going to Nepal first, right. so I'm doing a race around Mount Munaslu. Next year we're going to Everest to do a world record attempt with my friend Mike Alsop, who's a mountaineer, and we're doing the highest uh, marathon on Earth, hopefully. Oh you are God. in some pretty incredible vistas. Like totally. these, these places mm. are just mind-blowing. Yep. And I mean, I go there to see some of these places, and I've got the camera and I'm racing around and doing that. But you're there running. Do you yeah. take any of it in? Oh, look, you don't, to be honest with you, once you're exhausted, you see a lot of your feet. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of tears and there's a lot of drama and a few crises and stuff. But you do, in the, in the week build-up or, or the preparation, you do afterwards, you know, there's lots of highs and there's lots of lows and that's probably my personality now, too. Now, you said at the beginning that you weren't an ta overly talented athlete and yeah. you were asthmatic. Yeah. Um, why did you decide to do this? Um, I, look, I did a uh, crossing of the Libyan desert back in 1997 as part of a four-person expedition as you do these things, you know, and I fell in love with desert landscapes. And after that, I thought, oh, I want to do it, but I'd really wrecked my health doing it. My kidneys were totaled. So I thought, OK, I want to do this. I've heard about this race in Morocco. And I compared it and thought, oh, I could do that. And I hadn't even run a marathon, yeah. but I went and ran a 250k across mm. the Moroccan Sahara, and then I started running. So, and once I'd done one, it's really addictive, Time to you stop. know. Yeah. So, so take me through the psyche, like you, you, you're in maybe a couple hundred K and what's in there? I mean, oh, like, is, yeah. it, is it empty or are you... <laughs> no, no, oh, no, 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 but that, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. some, people, some people go all zen, don't they? And, and... Yeah, nah, mate. Oh, that, you know, that meditation thing, being in the zone, that's all, uh, okay. that's all rubbish. So it's a lot of yeah. chat. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of chat going on, you know, and um, there are times when you're really sort of hysterically happy and there are other times when you're completely down on the ground mm. and the funny thing is you can come back from and your body can, can cope with far more than you think it can mm. and, and it's, all, it's, it's a mind game. So it's like having a 
an angel and a devil sitting on your shoulder and the angel's saying, you can do it, Lise, keep going, I, yeah. I believe in you and all mm. this sort of stuff. And you've worked so hard and you've got the devil on the other side going, no, why don't you just sit down? Why don't you just have a break? Why don't you just give Actually, up? you'd be perfect to talk to our Holly a little later on. Yeah. But uh, before we get there, you've yep. actually written your second book. Yes. First yep. one was a story of your life. But yep. this one here, what can people expect? Um, this one is uh, about the last three or four years since my last book came out and so it's got Death Valley, a famous race uh, over in the States through the hottest desert on earth. It's got my run through New Zealand in it and oh, yeah. all the inspirational yeah. characters that I met along the way and there were some amazing stories of people that joined me on that route and that was 2,250 k's in 42 days. So this this is this is a yes. That's one of the I, I visited over 50 schools on route because you know I'm really passionate about my, getting our kids out and about. Uh, then there's the Gobi Desert, the Sahara, and the Himalaya race, and and a lot of medical tips, uh, doctors written stuff on what's happening to the body when you're doing this sort of thing and how do you deal with that's it. That's the Gobi Desert. It's the Gobi. So how many people are in in these races? Oh, uh, often um, between 100 and, and 700. And, and do you run together? Because all those shots are kind of you on your own. Yeah, a lot of yeah, it depends. Some of the races you end up completely on your own. That one in Niger that I did, I ended up completely okay. on my own Who are you in there a very dangerous that one? place. That one is Chris Crookshank. He's mm -hmm. a, a, a city fitness um, personal trainer at that time, and he came to Death Valley. That's over in the in America. That's amazing. Now, I, I know that you're a lot on running and stuff like that, but you have another a life, don't you? You do yeah, other yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah. what are your other? Well, I'm a jeweller. I've got some of my lovely jewellery on today, so I uh, sort of uh, specialise in opals and power pearls and Tahitian pearls and that sort of thing. Um, and I have a production company, I do a lot of documentaries. Making TV? Yeah, oh, a little right. bit, yeah, wow. and I've done a bit of a, uh, hosted a health and fitness show. Because you're just about to make a TV show yes. now? Yes, yeah, we're working on this. Uh, um, we've just done the pilot for a series called Run the Planet, mm -hmm. which will see me and a protege that I'm teaching to run go all around the world and uncover all these indigenous running stories. I think we've got something, a little wee snapshot of the project that you're actually about to embark on. What happened to him? It's my poor co-host and dear friend Chris Ord, and he had a techni seizure actually right yeah. there, which uh, nearly was fatal. So that was episode one. Oh, oh my God! God. <laughs> I can't <laughs> wait to see the rest of it. Can you? I can't either. But he's perfectly all right now.